Um, what is the art to playing creepy? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I, what I try to do is imbue a character with a complex reality, but I do agree that both David Pulis and I play some pretty out there parents in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, it got me thinking. I know your kids are younger, but when they when they are of the age where they can introduce their significant others to their parents, is there a film role of yours that you might say to them, hey, maybe hold off on showing them this until after we meet? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, yeah, no, they're too young to have, they can't really watch anything yeah. that I've done. There's only a couple of films, but um, no, I'll try to be a bit more open-minded and um, just open in general. <laughs> I, I love the concept of going back and revisiting somebody else's home because in this movie, obviously, there are a lot of things that are unnerving when uh, Jesse Buckley enters into the house. If we were to go back to your childhood home, is there anything in there that might be a little unnerving for us? Um, there was, I remember some purple kind of velvet wallpaper. That would unnerve <laughs> some. <laughs> Um, no, it was a warm, loving household in the 70s yeah. and everyone was just trying to make ends meet. I don't think it would be unnerving. Well, actually, velvet wallpaper sounds pretty cool or purple wallpaper sounds pretty cool. How do you, how do you explain this movie? I have to tell you, even the trailer, you know, we're now binge watching a lot of things that are somewhat mindless. Watching anything by Charlie Kaufman requires effort because you've really got to pay attention and and you can even even think I need to rewatch that because I, I, there are things I'm struggling with how do you even explain yeah. this film to be honest I think this probably is a film that people will want to watch several times because mm -hmm. it's so layered and so detailed and complex and it's full of so many ideas and depending on who you are and where you're at in life you'll kind of hook into it on different levels but um it's hard to talk about what it is without giving things away, but it exactly. is. But, you know, the narrative that people are aware of is that um, Jesse Plemons brings his girlfriend to meet his, he plays a character called Jake, he brings his relatively new girlfriend to meet his parents at the farmhouse where he grew up and where they still live. And nothing is as it seems. Mm -hmm. It's about life and death and love and longing and regret and hope and it's just so densely packed with so many incredible ideas um but really ultimately you can't talk about the film without giving it away so it's hard yeah. to that's what so I'll, I'll keep it simple then let's talk road trips this is an awkward road trip to begin with and then add in a <laughs> snowstorm <laughs> what's the most awkward road trip have you ever been on a road trip and it was just awkward or you may have been with somebody and you didn't have much to say or no road trips to me i kind of um i equate them with a sense of freedom like it's always about filling the car up and just going and not wearing where not knowing where you're going and just having the freedom to to explore that's that's an adventure so I, I don't really have the kind of you know tight feeling about it <laughs> yeah plus to be honest the older i get i'm not spending time with people that i'm not interested in so i'm not hopefully it's not too awkward uh yeah. to begin with what are, are you listening to oklahoma in the car what's your go-to road trip song what's on your playlist not listening to oklahoma um you know, the last big road trip we did, my family and I lived in LA for four years. And before we left, we we um, we drove through the South. So we had like a lot of Cajun music and, um, and you know, some old folk music. Uh, but yeah, my husband is a musician. I've made music. So we still play lots, make make playlists and, and kind of use them to create a mood. On a on a road trip, it's a fun thing to do. It makes it special, and you, you you know people really associate experiences with music, and suddenly it'll come flooding back that oh we were there and we did this and and not even pinpointed that pinpointed, but just evocative of feeling, you know. Did you come through uh, Arizona by chance on that road trip from LA? There was no Arizona. Oh, we came up and then we went. Yeah, sorry, I've never been to Phoenix. That's where you are. I'm in Phoenix, but you can go to the Grand Canyon, Flagstaff. I mean, we've got a lot to offer. It's actually a great- um, I, have, like, I have been to the Grand Canyon, yes. Okay, I'll count that. Yes, I mean, it's unbelievable. You can't believe what you're looking at. Well, and Lake Powell, if you ever want a great trip to do with your kids, rent a houseboat on Lake Powell. It's as if they set a lake right in the middle of the Grand Canyon. And it's mm -hmm. it's it's really special. A lot of, uh, most people don't really know about it, but. An idea for you. Google Lake Powell and you'll thank me later. 
I have heard of it, actually. You're right. Yeah. I think we did entertain the idea, but we were running out of time. Well, I, sadly, we're running out of time, Tony. I could talk to you a lot longer. <laughs> okay. I like it. Hey, I hope your husband is doing well, and I, and I just can't wait to see you in person. So um, thank you for this, and thanks for your time today. Very sweet of you. Thank you very much. Take, Take care. care. I know people have probably been confusing you guys through Zoom with the Jesse name, so let me start with Jesse Plemons. If we were to go back to your boyhood home, what would we be most unnerved by? Is there anything in your boyhood home that would make us a little bit nervous? Because this film, she goes back and finds several things. Uh, my mom finally, finally changed my room, but there was a while there, ye ye many years where my room became a shrine with just memorabilia and photos dating back to the early stages. But the creepiest part was I, I played a kid in, in an episode of Grey's Anatomy who had lionitis. He had tumors all over his face. My mother kept the prosthetic piece it was on the it was on the mantel. <laughs> Where please tell me she at least sold this on eBay. Did she pack this Ooh. thing up and is it a garage sale? Oh god. I hope it's on its way to the trash. <laughs> oh, that's funny. How Jesse Buckley, how about you? If we went back to your childhood home, anything that would unnerve us? Oh, many, many things. <laughs> oh, just the different terrible pictures of my adolescence would probably be enough unnerving for anybody. <laughs> did, did one of those photos end up in the film, perchance? Yes, I, th I think it did. Yes, I don't know where that even was taken, who took it, where I was, what I was thinking, but I looked like a little boy and that uh, was perfect. <laughs> I thought you were adorable, FYI. Uh, thank you. Uh, Jesse Buckley, what's the most awkward road trip you've ever been on? Charlie actually told me a pretty crazy story. How about you? What's the most, uh, you know, the awkward road trip for you was what? Jeez. Um, I, love, I love a road trip. Uh, what was the most awkward road trip? Oh, jeez, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, me please. I, I, I went traveling in Italy by myself for a month, and um, I was just like hitching around, and I had no plan, and I just anyway was kind of bopping around, and I decided I wanted to go to like um, Corsica and swim in the sea, and it was on a whim. So anyway, I got on the ferry and landed. And I booked, I thought Corsica was tiny. Like I thought it was like, you know, like my hometown that you could walk kind of around, but it's massive. And so I landed in this key <laughs> and I went off to like the tourist. I was like, hello, I've booked to stay here. And they're like, there is no uh, transport available. You, you, you're you going to have to, I was like, uh, and I, no money. Like I was, I was a student. So I just made a sign and I hitched my way across the, uh, the island, but Obviously, nobody's going to the other side of the complete island, which is about three hours drive, I soon found out. So I got on the back of four different cars and oh it's God. super hilly as well. So one of them, I was like, I'm going to get sick in the back of this car. And then the worst part was my phone died. I couldn't remember. I didn't know where I was staying in the town. And I was in this one car and this couple were in the front and in it in oh and every because I was in Italy so everybody was speaking Italian but now they're speaking French and they ha had the biggest domestic row right in the front while I was sitting in the back not knowing where, <laughs> where I was going um, this is anyway. a movie this is a Charlie Kaufman movie <laughs> oh yeah oh my gosh I don't know if you can tap that Jesse Plemons I know they're only giving me about another minute I get one of the things about Charlie Kaufman this is not a movie. I'm so used to binging these mindless shows right now like Tiger King. So to get prepared mentally for something of his is a whole sport in of itself. But is there anything that's really mindless that you actually are a little bit obsessed with right now? The opposite of a Charlie Kaufman film. Bucks, do you have anything in quarantine that you're watching? Oh, well, I watch many mindless, uh, like, uh, yeah, I Tiger, or Tiger King was uh, very watched in my house when we were... And they're, I wouldn't call him, I think it's incredible. <laughs> he must be delighted with himself. He's now like the most famous man in the world, which is all he kind of wanted. Jesse Plemons, anything for you? 
little show called Below Deck. Are you familiar with that? I, okay, so I've heard about it, but I haven't seen it yet. So that's my next thing. Oh, I'm going to watch that. Get on that. I can't thank you guys for your time. I know that these are short days and it's weird to do it via Zoom and it's hard to talk about a good movie over Zoom. So thanks you guys and congratulations on everything. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Tara Hitchcock and I am in the cool state of uh, Arizona. It's about 115 degrees today. How are you? Um, cooler than that. <laughs> You know, it's funny. I was actually thinking about you. I've ha I've been having a little trouble sleeping for the past couple of weeks. And I, and when I was screening this movie, I thought, God, if I have a hard trouble sleeping, does Charlie Kaufman ever have a hard time sleeping? Because you are much more cerebral than I am. How how do you sleep? Do you dream a lot in your sleep? Um, I I do have some trouble sleeping. Yeah. Um, not always, but it 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 happens. I go through cycles, and um, yeah, I have a lot of dreams. I was going to say, because your films are so unique, obviously, and, and definitely they require work. It, it's not Tiger King, where you go and watch a Netflix episode and it's kind of mindless. Um, even the author of the book was, was wondering how this would be adapted. What was the hardest thing for you to adapt, to take from book to screen? Um, I guess, um, have you read the book? The book is very interior. No. Yeah, well, it's very, it's a, it's a it's an interior monologue um, on the part of a young woman, and and um, it, it's all it's all that, and it's very dreamy. And I I guess trying to figure out who she was and what her relationship with Jake was, and trying to flesh that into something that actors could do, right. so um, so it wouldn't feel exactly like a Terrence Malick movie. <laughs> right. Well, you got some great. I mean, that's the. Man, the acting in this is just off the charts. Yeah, Even the awkward, the awkward road trip home. Oh, what's the what's the most awkward road trip you've had? Um, no, I'm well. I'm, I'm I hitchhiked across country. Um, you did? Yeah, when I was um, about nineteen with a friend, and we got some really scary rides. Um, <laughs> So that was, um, and that's a scoop for you. I don't think I've ever, I'm not sure, but I don't think I've ever said that before. Uh, yeah, one guy told us he had a gun in his glove compartment and he would not hesitate to use it. Um, one guy do do? didn't know what state we were in. He was so um, zapped out on some sort of drug thing. Yeah, but it was, um, it was exciting. Please tell me none of this happened in Arizona. No, we didn't go through that, that area of the country. We went north. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you made it. My gosh, that could be your next. That could be your, that could be your next book. Yeah, yeah. you know, it, it is interesting. You know, this whole concept of meeting. I mean, I know it's much deeper than that, but meeting your significant other's parents and when is the right time to do that, and what you what knowledge you gather from being in their home and watching them interact. Yeah. Um, when is the when is the right time to meet someone else's parents? It's never a good time. <laughs> right. <laughs> Especially now, I would wait on it a little bit after yeah, exactly. after what we've been through. Yeah. I mean, the title obviously is I'm thinking of ending things. I know this whole time of the past, you know, God, it feels like forever, six, seven months now almost, um, yeah. is so is so surreal. Have you developed any habit that you actually wish you could end? If you're thinking of ending things. What kind of habit have you developed during self quarantine that I got to figure out how to get rid of this? Um, probably spending too much time online. I, I, I don't know if I developed that during this, but I perfected it. And um, I, yeah, it needs, to, it needs to end. You know what, I'm with you. In fact, your movie is a great, it'll take your mind for sure off anything that you're obsessed with currently online, your film. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, w it's, I tried to keep the question somewhat a little silly because it's so hard to discuss your work on a Zoom call in four minutes. So I can't yeah, thank no, you I, enough. I appreciate it, I like the questions. Well, last quick thing, speaking of Netflix, what are you mindlessly binging? Is there anything that is super mindless, the opposite of something you would do that you're obsessed with or watch? I did rewatch Breaking Bad, oh, which was, um, which, which I haven't seen since it was first on. And I, it was great to get to see Jesse Plemons again, because yes. that's the first time I'd ever seen him. And I, I, was, I just really loved that performance. So it, was, it takes a while to get there in the series, but I got there and it was, it was tremendous. Well, he's excellent in this too. And watch Game Night. I loved him in Game Night as well. Oh, he's great, do anything. he's great in Game Night. That's right. <laughs> so yeah. funny. Hey, congratulations. I hope to meet you in person one of these days and stay sure. cool and, and, and sane. Thanks, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you.